So I'm in my basement right now. Um, I've got a little, kind of a small little hi-fi set up here, and um, I've been collecting some records. It's kind of the latest hobby, but I've quickly exceeded the capacity of my uh, record storage. So this is a vintage crate um, from back, you know, when this in the 70s and 80s when records were still kind of a big deal, and uh, I like it. I think it's a perfect match for storing these records, so I'm going to try to copy this thing exactly. I already threw together some quick measurements here. Um, it's not, the construction of this thing isn't anything too complex. You know, it's just some one by material piece of plywood, you know, that creates this right here and then just some really thin slats to support it down the sides and, and underneath. These dimensions aren't symmetrical. <clears throat> These dimensions aren't like, I don't know, they're weird. And I don't understand why they are the way that they are. It would be a lot easier if they were all just the same dimension. But as you can see, well you can't see, but I'm telling you it's like one inch by one and a half inches and so, and but then this top piece is only three quarters of an inch thick, and I don't know, it's odd, but I'm gonna still make try to match it exactly, and then I might do something interesting with the laser for the center here and on the sides, maybe. Well, as far as wood is concerned, I've got a lot to choose from here, but I want something that's fairly sturdy. I have this. Big old heavy chunk of wood here. It's got an H on it. I think that means hickory. I just don't remember having hickory in my stash. The other option would be this. Uh, it's kind of like a, a pine, some type of a pine. It, it's actually the same material that I made this workbench out of. You can see it's got the printing on the side. Uh, I think this was going to be too soft. So I think I'm going to see what I can do with this as far as the frame is concerned and then I'll come up with something else for the slats. So I have my stock milled to the correct dimensions. I kind of had to do a measure twice, cut twice type deal because I had it originally done as one and a half by one inch, but it seemed a little too big. And so I went and checked and sure enough, it's one and a quarter by one inch. Makes a big difference. So this is the stock for the frame. Now I've got to work on the slats. I've got this big old chunk of white oak that's been sitting around. I think it'll do nicely. Um, I need to rough cut it first and then I think it's, if you can see, this isn't the GoPro making that uh, curve. It's actually curved. It's crowned pretty bad or cupped pretty bad I guess you could say because this is a flat sawn piece of wood. So long story short, I'm going to rough cut it and then I'm going to flatten it out and see what dimensions I end up after it's all been jointed and planed and then I'll determine from that point whether or not I can get two boards out of one of these pieces or if I have to get all five of 
what is it? Three, four, five, seven boards out of this whole big piece here. Hopefully I can. I have more white oak if I need to dig into it. I just would rather try to get it all out of this one piece.
Okay, so I've completed all of the structural components of the crate. So all that's left is to um, make those end pieces out of the plywood. And I think what I'm going to use is I've had this piece of plywood kicking around for a while. I think it's birch on one side. Um, it's probably AC, I think, because it's not... You know, the appearance is on this side, the appearance grade, and then you got knots and stuff on this side. Um, and it's got a MDF core. And I'm not a big fan of MDF core for anything that I would be making furniture-wise. So this would be a perfect use for this scrap piece of plywood. So you can hear the racket in the background, this guy right here. Uh, what I did was I found a picture of the actual label of the peach crate that I currently have. And so I decided to use my laser engraver and now I'm engraving that logo onto those end panels that I cut for the crate. I'll show you a finished one right here. So that's what it looks like when it's finished. And then it'll have something like this. Something like that when I'm done. My dimensions appear to be a little bit off, but I'll figure that all out once I start assembling things. Alright, with the laser running in the background, I'm going to get working on uh, putting these frame pieces together. Um, you could easily uh, just nail through the ends like they did in the old days when they made the actual peach crates. But... Uh, or you could use pocket hole screws, which is, you know, a really good way of joining two pieces of wood. But I'm going to go ahead and use my domino, mainly just because I have it and I can. So um, it's definitely overkill for what I'm trying to do here. But I need uh, a little bit more practice with it anyway. And so it won't hurt. It only, I'm only going to use eight of my dominoes. And um, the dominoes I use, just for any of you that have a domino joiner and you don't like paying the prices, the Festool prices for the dominoes, since they're just made out of wood, there's nothing too fancy about them. Um, I buy these. I'm not sponsored or anything, but there's a company in... Um, Missouri called Tay Tools and they are a great woodworking supply company and they have their own house branded stuff a lot of different things and uh, I use Tay Tools for my dominoes I also buy my sandpaper from them because they always are running some type of a special it's a pretty good deal if you're interested go ahead and check them out like I said I'm not sponsored they're not paying me to say this it's just my preferred online woodworking supply retailer I'll leave a link down in the description below. Running a domino is just like running any other type of joinery system. You gotta lay out your pieces. In the orientation that you want them. And then you have to mark your cut. Make 
make sure your domino is going to actually fit. Might be tight. Alright, the domino is already set up from the last time I cut uh, loose tenons. One thing I want to do is I do want to get some dust collection on this, so I'm going to make even more noise than what I'm already making. Just a little pro tip for you, this is the adapter off of a Bosch 5-inch um, sander that I have, and it just happens to fit perfectly on the domino, and that adapts it. to a standard, whatever this is, one inch, one and a quarter inch fitting, like that. Just line up with the mark. that about 15 more times. So here are a couple of cuts that I made. Can't get much more precise than that. So here it is with all the dominoes installed. I will say that this corner here is loose a little bit because I miscut one of these and so one of the cool things about the domino is you can actually uh, incrementally increase the width of the cut um, to help with alignment but it still doesn't go overboard you know it just gives you a little bit of wiggle room in case you miss or um, if you have something that doesn't have to be super precise or it's hard to get a real precise measurement or whatever the case may be, you can cut these a little bit looser to give you some wiggle room, which is a nice little feature. I'm going to do the other side and hopefully by then the, uh, the engraver will be done and then we're going to be able to start uh, putting some stuff together here. I've sanded the inside edges of these uh, pieces just because it'll be harder to get to them once it's put together so now it's time to do a little glue up save you some time here I'm just gonna go like this all right this one's ready to dry now well that glue is drying I'm gonna pre-finish these panels as you can see there's a difference um, I, I got a lot better contrast out of this one but it's a much deeper etch it's charred the wood quite a bit more. I ran this at a higher power at a lower speed and then I went low power high speed on this one because I really I'm still figuring out the capabilities of that um, laser engraver um, and as you can see this one turned out great uh, maybe not as high of a contrast as that one but every you can still make out everything and I think the contrast will dial up once I get some finish on it. I'm gonna go ahead and finish these with some wipe on polyurethane um, and then I'm not going to stain them or anything. Uh, I think I'm going to need as much of this light colored wood as I possibly can get. 
I haven't decided what I'm doing on the frame yet. I might stain it a little bit, some type of a light stain, uh, or maybe boiled linseed oil. I'm not 100% sure yet, but this for sure is going to get a couple of coats of wipe on polyurethane. All right, here we go. I haven't done much. I've lightly sanded these with 320 grit sandpaper. We're going to see how it looks. Seems to be very thirsty, it's soaking up the finish. Just trying to even it out. Now on to the darker one. So here's the result. This one was the one done with high power. You can see, um, it, I mean, it turned out really good. Um, some of the um, mid-tone areas are a little bit muddy. And this writing, you know, it, it this writing in here was in red, red on black, and so when you convert it to black and white, there's it's very close, and that's close in shade, so that's why it doesn't show up very well. Over here was the lower power itching, and I think this one definitely turned out a lot better. You still have a little bit of the brown of the wood on the dark parts, lots of definition in the mid-tone area, and you can even make out the writing here pretty well. Uh, luckily, this crate's going to have two ends, and you only see one end at a time, so I can pick and choose which end I have facing outward. And I think this is going to be the end that uh, faces outward. It turned out really well. All right, here's the end frames all glued up. They're good to go. They're ready to be sanded. Here's the end panels all sealed up. So these are their final dimension. So once I get the frames sanded, I think I'm going to put a small chamfer around all the edges just so it's a little bit easier and more comfortable to hold. And then I will um, glue and attach the panels to the frames. All right, it's another day and um, I've got the, uh, end, the ends of the crate all finished. Uh, I just used boiled linseed oil. Or no, I didn't, I'm sorry. I used uh, Danish oil, which has boiled linseed oil in it. <clears throat> anyway. It doesn't have to be a durable finish or anything. This is just going to be a crate that sits on a table for the majority of its life. Um, what I plan to do now is attach the frames to this uh, decorative insert here. And I'm going to just simply use uh, some glue and some nails. And I think I'm going to take a page out of the, out of the John Heiss book of uh, woodworking. And I'm going to use some construction adhesive because I have finished all the sides of this frame and it, so it, it does have kind of a I don't think regular wood glue is gonna bond as well as polyurethane glue so that is the plan I will also from the back I will fasten with nails, um, just with some pin nails, just to hold it all together while the glue dries. And then after that I will move on to the side pieces and figure out how to, you know, attach those slats to the end pieces.
All right, they're all uh, attached now. Um, the, end, the end caps are complete. I did have a little bit of squeeze out right here and over here on this one. The other one turned out pretty good. Um, the only problem with it is that uh, there's a slight, mis slight misalignment with the engraving. So I have a little bit of a light, you know, whatever, an unengraved portion right here. Um, but, and maybe a little bit of squeeze out. On the squeeze out side of things, I'm just gonna let it, that glue dry and then I'll use a chisel and pop it out. If I try to wipe it away, it'll just grind it into the engraved surface and it'll be stained. So I'm just gonna leave it, let it dry and uh, move on to the next step. The next step is going to be attaching the slats. Really, once the slats are attached, this thing is going to be done. So we're close to the end. Let me show you what I plan on doing. Okay, I've got a plan for attaching the slats to the sides here. I'm going to glue it. I'll flip this over like this. I'll glue it, pin nail it into position and then I am going to use my countersink bit and these brass screws to fasten it. And I guess we will see how that turns out. Well, here's the finished project. I think it turned out great. Um, definitely overkill. Did I need to use oak to build this? Absolutely not. You could use two by fours. I think there's no coincidence that these slats are three and a half inches wide. So you can get a, a bunch out of a two by four or a four by four if you wanted. Did I need to laser engrave the label? Absolutely not. You can leave it blank. Um, they sell, they actually sell these labels and you can paste them on yourself. So if you wanted the more original look, you could do that. Did I need to use domino joinery to put this together? Absolutely not. You could nail it through the ends if you wanted to. You could use uh, pocket holes if you want. Uh, since you have this backing plate on here, you probably could just glue the pieces together and then attach it to the backing plate. Did I need to use brass screws to attach my side slats? Absolutely not. You could get away with just using glue and uh, a nail gun and you could bang these out pretty quickly. Um, the reason I went so fancy is, you know, because I can, first of all. And second of all, 
record collecting is one of those hobbies where there is no ceiling um, as far as the the quality of your sound system, the quality of the furniture that you use to store and display and to play your records. There's no limit to the number of records you can buy. There's no limit to the price of certain records, things like that. So I just figured um, I don't have a permanent record console or table or cabinet yet, but um, I'm kind of setting the bar um, kind of where I want it as far as how nice the stuff is that I use to, uh, you know, to supplement my hobby. And so I wanted a really, really nice crate. And I also like how this crate uh, mirrors the original crate from the 60s, the peach crate that everybody and their brother owned back in the day. Um, and uh, so I kind of wanted to uh, make this kind of as a, a tribute to that. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I film the things that I like to do, and this is one of those things. Um, especially when it's a simple project that I may have made a little bit more complicated, but still, it's a relatively simple project that doesn't take a lot of time, and you see the fruits of your labors almost right away. This took me, you know, two days a couple hours each day working and, and I have this product that I can use now. If you don't mind hitting that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it and the like button as well. I don't know how if that really affects anything anymore these days with the algorithm and how small my channel is, but I guess it can't hurt and it's free for you to do. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, I'd appreciate it. Once again, my name is Tom, this is Southpaw Workshop. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.